Now, in A-level chemistry, whenever we are doing reactions with benzene, we should jump for joy because there is only one mechanism that we need to know, which is electrophilic substitution. So the only question then becomes, which electrophile are we using? And when we are trying to go from benzene to this um, ketone, a phenyl ketone, so we've got this C double bond O, then it's going to be Friedel Crafts acylation. And so, to spot what the electrophile is, all we need to look at really is where this part came from. So this clearly came from a benzene ring and something that looks like this. And where are we going to get that from? Well, that's going to come from our acyl chloride. Okay, where the R group could be whatever length of carbon chain, whatever else is happening over here, doesn't really matter. The key part is this acyl chloride part. So when it comes to our electrophilic substitution mechanisms, again, we split those up into three main parts, which I have started to prepare earlier. So part one is generation of the electrophile. And that's because, as we know, due to the delocalization of the pi electrons, we are not going to get direct attack of this neutral electrophile. Instead, we need to actually generate a positively charged electrophile so that the charge density essentially is high enough for these two to actually attract each other. Um, so we will have our, I think I put my two too high, that's okay. So we'll start with our acyl chloride. Again, this R group could be anything we like. And then we're going to add a catalyst and the catalyst that we use is called a halogen carrier. So it's something that's going to take this halogen off of the acyl chloride. So because we've got Cl, we're going to use AlCl3. This AlCl3 takes the Cl as Cl minus. So we end up with our positively charged electrophile. So this carbon has got a positive charge and AlCl4 with the whole thing with a negative charge. We can put the minus here or we can put this whole thing in square brackets and put the minus on the outside. Not the biggest deal which one of those you choose. So now we've got our electrophile. Now we can actually carry out our mechanism. And as we've already said, that mechanism, of course, because we're dealing with benzene, is the only mechanism that we learn for benzene, which is electrophilic. Substitution. Substitution. Where essentially we are swapping. Oh, let's even change colors. Oh, they're over here. We are essentially swapping a hydrogen or substituting a hydrogen for this group here. And again, that mechanism is going to be the same every time, but let's practice anyway. Hopefully you can do this along with me, or maybe you've already done it and now you just want to check your answer even better. So we start with, we start with our benzene ring. Now, the trickiest part when it comes to this mechanism is like positioning our electrophile in a way that's going to make it easy for ourselves. Now, my tip, and this is what I do myself, is I place this positively charged carbon right next to the carbon that I'm going to be substituting on. So if I want the, um, if I want this group on this carbon over here, then right next to it, that's where I'm going to draw my electrophile. Okay, because now that's going to make the curly arrow super, super easy because our first curly arrow is going from the delocalized um, pi ring to this positively charged carbon. And when we have attack by a curly arrow, essentially all we're doing is forming a new bond. So now all we've done is formed a new bond between this carbon and this carbon. So it then makes our intermediate really nice and easy to draw. So we've still got the hydrogen here, but we've now formed a bond with this carbon. So we have this, oh no, look what I've done. Okay, but because we have opened up, we've disrupted these delocalized electrons, our pi ring is going to be open towards the carbon that is being, that we're having our substitution and that will have our positive charge. So as our second 
and final curly arrow, we need this H to fall off so that we can regenerate the delocalized pie ring and end up with our final substituted product. So second curly arrow from this CH bond into our ring. And we end up with what we wanted. We've got our pie delocalized ring back and now we've got this as our acylated product. Now we've also got, of course, this H plus that fell off. Okay, so plus H plus. Okay, it's H plus because both of the electrons that were once in this covalent bond are now back over here. So this hydrogen doesn't have any electrons anymore, so it's got a positive charge. Now this H plus is actually quite important because it's going to react with our um, AlCl4 minus so that we can regenerate our catalyst. Because again, it's not a catalyst if it's going to be used up, we need to regenerate it. So how are we going to regenerate our catalyst? That's my step three that I rubbed out because I ran out of space. So I'm gonna go up here. Bye. Sorry, not sorry. Okay, our final step is the regeneration of the catalyst where we have our H plus reacting with our AlCl4 minus with or without the square brackets and then we are going to get HCl and regenerate our catalyst of AlCl3, which can then go on and react again with another benzene ring and another, well, not with the benzene ring, with another acyl chloride. So then that electrophile can react with the benzene ring and so on and so on and so forth. So our overall um, equation for this reaction would be our benzene plus our acyl chloride produces our substituted product plus HCl, okay? We do not include the AlCl3 in our equation because it is a catalyst. If we really wanted to, we could put the AlCl3 over the arrow to show that it is a, um, a vital reaction condition, but it is not involved as a reactant or a product. Nice and straightforward. Again, electrophilic substitution whenever you see benzene. For more A-level chemistry um, content, make sure that you have liked, commented, subscribed, you know, all of the above, and I will see you in the next one.